Okay, fire flame with the sprayed edge and a different edition of fourth wing with the sprayed edges. Let's go. I'm cute, cutie. All right, let's start this audio. Hi, friends. Today we are going to talk about Iron Flame. This video is going to have every single spoiler, all the spoilers in the world. So if you haven't read Iron Flame yet, go read it and then come back and hear my rambling and ranting about it. Let's start off with some basic thoughts. The star rating that I gave this book is three and a half stars and I'm actually shocked by it. I thought this was going to be a five book series, but this actually like let me down quite a bit and I'm very sad about it. But there's a couple of reasons it's not five stars like Fourth Wing is, and Fourth Wing is still five stars. Sometimes when like a sequel to a book is bad, it makes me feel like the series is off, but Fourth Wing is still perfect. So some of the reasons. There were so many times I just did not want to pick this book up. It was, it was long. So I saw somebody say, or make a video saying that the important things were rushed, but it was also too long. Like it was rushed and too long at the same time. And I, that's what I agree with. Um, I wrote down some notes. Oh, they're also like, there just weren't enough moments where this book made me feel good. It felt like three different books and I understand that there's a part one and a part two. And often I can respect that. But in this book, it should have been two different books, especially with the cliffhanger we get at the end of this one. It didn't feel like a cliffhanger. It felt like she stopped mid sentence. It felt like somebody was like, oh, you've hit your word limit. And she's like, okay, I'll wrap it up. Also, okay, again, all the spoilers. One of my biggest, <laughs> biggest issues. These are my three big issues, okay? One is Jack Barlow. How, why, why do we do this? Why? Why? You literally, like at the beginning of the book, created like a Jack Barlow Jr. and then killed him off so quick. Why didn't you just keep him around? I, th I just and like he was confusing like I can't tell if he actually meant the life debt thing he said to Violet this man can have no redemption arc like I'm at the point where if he gets a redemption arc I will be furious number two the cat plot line being cat being x or Zayden's ex oh my lord you car crash you have to be kidding me with this like Violet in the first book, oh, I loved her. I loved every little bit of her. But this, <laughs> it felt like a 16 year old was like, hey, can I add a plot? And added the jealousy plot line. And I hate it. I hate it. It was so awful. And third reason, these are my big three. Third reason, not enough Zayden. This book was dying for some Zayden POVs. Oh my gosh, it, we get one Zayden chapter. And I understand that that's how the last book was as well. It, it, it needed Zayden chapters. It needed Zayden POV because nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. And Violet is an unreliable narrator at this point. She's too clouded by her emotions. I also wrote down that this book needed an editor. <laughs> it felt super Wattpad-y. And a lot of the time I don't like... I don't mind Watt Patty, especially when it's Zayden. Zayden can do no wrong in my eyes, basically. But like with the jealousy thing, and like when she told her friends, most of them were like, it's okay. I was like, are you sure? Oh, I will, as a little disclaimer, because Zayden is basically a carbon copy of Rysan from Akatar, I do, I do compare them a lot. And Akatar is my favorite. I have an Akatar tattoo now, actually. It's a sword and it says, you do not falter, you do not yield from Wings and Ruin. So I actually have Rysan's word ta where it's tattooed on my body. Nobody will live up to him. However, Zayden, like the Zayden and Rysan parallel doesn't bug me. I think Zayden's amazing, brilliant, fantastic. Okay, let's go mostly character by character now. So obviously let's start with Violet. Violet in this book is so annoying, I almost couldn't get through it. 
it was honestly I saw somebody say that she's the Rory Gilmore of the series and I was like that's so true it also gave me the vibes of when I was watching Vampire Diaries and I actually couldn't get through it because Elena pissed me off so much I like stopped watching after season two I think she just oh my gosh so many of like my notes written in this book are for fuck's sake and shut the fuck up like she's acting like she's 12 and she was so mad at Zayden for not telling her the truth and then the whole first half of the book she's lying to her friends for the same reason I wrote hypocrite like you understand your own reasons so why can't you understand his reasons it makes me so mad it makes me so mad one of the lines was like you fell in love with the leader of a rebellion exactly and you can't block out Dana so who what and she even says a couple times like his reasons make sense but I'm still mad okay then it was the same they had the same argument over and over and over and over again so unproductive just not listening and I know some people didn't like the um well ask me questions part somebody said it gave them like guess what no guess guess but he knew that she knew some of these things maybe she wasn't ready to talk about it he can sense her intentions right so maybe he knew it. and honestly this man has lived an insane life so far he's got secrets out the wazoo He's got events and traits and people out the wazoo. How is he supposed to prioritize and run a war and run a rebellion at the same time? You need to prioritize, Violet. Like, does it really matter to you if he slept with Cat a lot or not? Probably not. It was just like, you guys could die at any second. Get over it. And also the way that he, like, behaved towards Cat should have just cut off the jealousy immediately. I understand the Cat's a bitch and Cat's being a bitch. But her own jealousy should have been cut off immediately after how we first treated Kat when they were together. She, ugh, fucking fuming. Her insecurity, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Her insecurity is unreal. Remember in Fourth Wing when one of the flyers was like, let's use her as um, ransom. And she was like, fucking try me. Or even earlier this book where I disagree with her about being mad at Zayden, but she had, like, enough self-worth to be like, this man is perfect, but I deserve better. I deserve honesty. And that screamed confidence to me. Again, I think that she was in the wrong being so mad about it, but you have to have some self-confidence to behave that way, you know? And all of a sudden, it's just, like, her maturity just... All right, Zayden is still perfect. Zayden is perfect. I love him so much. Everything he does is always correct. I will always be a Zayden apologist, but I don't think he needs to apologize for anything. Oh my gosh, okay, my favorite Zayden moment from the entire book, I think, was when Kat and Violet were sparring and he talked in her mind and he was like, I really don't care if you kill her, but you're gonna care. And is like, I'm going to respect your decision either way. And then when she has him, like, hold her back, and she's screaming at Kat, like, I'm going to kill you. He's like, let me know if you mean it, and I'll let go. He just, like, he respects her so much. And I don't understand... I don't understand how she can feel like if you put Zayden in this danger, you'd be dead right now to, like, those people. But then, like, when he doesn't want her to go do things kind of stupid... She gets mad. It's like, it goes both ways. Again, Feyre and Rysand, perfectly written couple. Respect each other's decisions, but they also see and understand how much they love each other and how much it would hurt the other person if one of them hurt or died. This also, at points, gave me the vibes of my biggest issue with the ending of Divine Rivals, so that a little bit of a spoiler here for that. But when you guys are saying, like, we could die at any moment, don't let go of my hand, we need to stay together, then do it. This is what I don't understand. If me and Nathan were out, I'd be like, hold my hand, and you're actually not letting go. Ever, ever in a billion years, hold my hand, I'll glue us together, I will tie us together, I'll handcuff you to me. And they're, like, separate, they're separating all the time. And he almost dies, like, twice while he's out there. She almost dies a couple of times. I'm like, if, if, 
if this is your priority, Zayden said he would just leave with her. Why doesn't he delegate and stay with her? Felt kind of betrayed by Zayden was when he revealed his second signet. It just felt very... Like, this was a very well-written plot twist, and I actually did feel, like, the betrayal, like, in my gut. Almost like I did with the Dane reveal last book, where I was just like, I can't believe you didn't tell me that. Like, that's very significant and could actually, like, affect, like, our relationship. But after five seconds of common sense, I was like, oh, wait. Dane can still read her mind. A couple people, like... And she isn't really known for keeping secrets. And he could be, he'd be executed on sight. So I still get it. Now we have to talk about the ending for Zayden before we move on. I haven't cried this much over a book since The Mark of Athena came out and Annabeth and Percy fell into Tartarus. That's the last time. I told Nathan, I haven't even cried this much in life since before, like, we were married. Like, when I used to have, like, boy problems, I sobbed this hard. I was losing my shit. It is so unfair. I am furious. I am, and it's also, it's, I also don't respect the way it was written. And that's what also bugs me. Like I said, it feels like she just stopped mid-sentence. Like, with nothing finished. Like, the last plot, the last cliffhanger was so good. It wrapped up the events and then said, boom, this is where we're going to start. This one was bleh. And I don't understand it. I don't understand Venon. I don't know if I'm stupid or it's not explained and we're supposed to learn later, but I don't understand these things. Were they all humans originally? Can they die? Is it really that big of a deal that Zayden's a Venon? Like, can he just learn to control it? And just kind of have creepy eyes. Like, I don't understand. Also, when I first read it, I was like, he's leaving Violet. I thought he was leaving Violet because of this whole thing. Like, when he goes to see Jack. But I reread it word for word after my sob fest. And he doesn't pack a bag or anything. And he does say, like, I'm going to be the biggest cause of her heartbreak. But that could just be because of the whole Venon thing. So I've decided that he's going to stay and work it out with her. Because if he doesn't... It's so out of character for him. Everything that he showed us this book shows that he is going to stick by her side no matter what. Even when he's a threat to her, he's already been like a threat to her, like being in the rebellion and like all that stuff. So what's new? And also it felt a little, I felt like they built it up so much that they didn't kill off anybody. Like, I didn't want anyone to die, you know? But they built it up so much, and then, like, nothing happened. Like, I thought, like, Rydok or Sawyer were gonna die, or Ree. I thought one of them was gonna die. Or, like, Imogen, maybe. But nobody? At all. Nobody. It just felt anticlimactic. Then, while we're talking about the main couple, I guess we'll talk about Kat. Why is she in my book? Why is she on these pages? I want her off my screen now. Every time she was on, I was just like, you, like, do you have no shame, no pride? If I was her, well, I wouldn't be your friend, but if I had to be your friend, I'd be like, you're embarrassing yourself. Like, this is really, really sad. Like, you didn't even like Zayden. You thought he was hot and he had a good last name for you. So I'm going to need you to shut up. And I do, I genuinely do get the flyer rider animosity. I do, I get it. But there, some things are bigger than us, and clearly that's not all it was for Kat. Also, she had like no respect for the relic riders. Like Imogen and like all those people that she, I would assume, grew up with, like she did with Zayden. Like, when your people vouch for someone for you, you should just. Call it a day. We're going to war, girlfriend. Oh my gosh. When she showed up basically naked at Satan's door, that is unhinged behavior. It's not okay. It's muggy. It's a bit muggy. That's very muggy. I actually almost threw my book at a wall. All right, next character we're going to discuss 
is Dane. In my opinion, is he redeemed? Yes. That's my opinion! I think Dane is redeemed. When I hear his point of view more and see his actions, what he did was wrong. Do not take me the wrong way. What he did was wrong. But his it's his dad and like he thought he was protecting her and it was wrong. And he's genuinely remorseful about it. When he turned around and stabbed Varish, I dropped my book. I could not believe it. I honestly like didn't think that he would kill her after like refusing to read her mind um in the previous like interrogation but that was insane and then immediately like going with them and the way he behaved the rest of the book just I don't know I think he's redeemed the scene where he said if you love Zayden then I'll trust him as much as you do kind of tore me apart all right, let's talk Sloan. First of all, she was really annoying me at the beginning. It made me upset, but I was more upset at Violet. Like, can you just like communicate for two seconds? And also Sloan like didn't respect Imogen either. Like when Imogen was like, that's not what happened. She's cool. It was so annoying. Also her relic, I don't understand. Is she not just a Venom now? I don't understand. I don't, honestly, I had to skim a lot of this book, especially during like the politics and border stocks. It didn't make any sense. So maybe I missed something, but okay, while we're talking about Sloan, let's talk about my favorite part of the entire book that made the entire book worth reading. Is when Violet was getting tortured and Liam showed up. Just like, I felt in my heart, like I felt it in my heart. I felt like when I was squeezing, I felt like the love from him in the page and the support, like, and that was a badass Violet moment as well. Him being there for her actually, like, destroyed me. Destroyed me. That was perfect. Oh my gosh. Some other kind of smaller characters. Put Eric in here. I like Eric. Um, he was a person who was actually able to, like, be like, I hate you guys because your people killed my people and all that, but then, like, be, be a productive member of society at the same time, you know? I didn't love how he brought Violet through that guard thing, but like, I get it because she's the one who knows what you're looking for and he would not leave without her. Like, I think he genuinely cares about, this is another thing about this book. Why does everyone love Violet so much? Uh, like again, comparing it, but I understand why everyone loves Feyre so much. Why does everyone like Violet so much? She's kind of, <sighs> Rhee's ride or die for real, for real, for real. I can't believe she stuck by Violet's side that long. Violet could have even said, I'm carrying important information and until I then can't read my mind or your mind, I can't tell you. And I feel like that would have been fine. Listen, I love Zayden, but if you're taking his advice on how to manage relationships when you have to keep secrets, Zaddy uh, doesn't have the best coping mechanisms. When Rhi hopped on Taryn to protect Violet, I screamed. She is such a badass. Rydoc is the love of my life. Every single time he said anything, there's a heart by it in this book. Also, when he was the only one that was like, I'm a little pissed when Violet told them, I was like, thank you. You're me for real. You're so me. I love Rydok. I was so scared for him because I felt like he would be like the most likely to die in this book, but he's okay. Sawyer, I don't remember being as big in their little friend group last book, but maybe he was and I just was paying attention to other things, but he seems sweet. Him and Jacinia is so cute when he like practices the good morning uh, sign to Violet and then goes and runs off to talk to her. Oh my gosh. Oh, Sawyer lost his leg, which was sad, but like him like fighting for his dragon was fantastic. I thought that was a really beautiful moment as well. And like Violet helping, like that whole scene was very beautiful. Imogen is the love of my life. All I wrote for her is love of my life, team Violet all the way. She just, she's a ride or die as well. She's fantastic. All right, we're going to talk family and then dragons. Lilith and the siblings. I have so many conflicting emotions about it. First of all, Lilith, I do not think she is redeemed all the way. I think she ended on a good note, but she let so many people die to keep the secret, including, they thought, Brennan and Violet at some points. I will say, though, like, oh my gosh, the excerpt from the unsent correspondence about like 
her and her children, I almost started weeping. Like that was really sad. And the way that it happened that she had to use Sloan, I wept. And she actually did save Violet's life and many, many lives. So, you know, gotta hand it to her. But it doesn't really balance out the scales, in my opinion. Brennan pissed me off this book. I was so excited. I was so excited. And like the first half, I liked him a lot. When Brennan, out of pettiness, refused to go and fight, I was like, who are you? Like, like you've been through a lot. I get you might be a little bit more like hard or heartless now, but Zayden, Zayden's doing it. Do you trust Violet? Why would you let your both your sisters that just found out you're alive go to war without you? I mean, he didn't in the end, but still. <sighs> I think Mir's reaction was justified. I would punch Brennan in the face too, and then I'd hug him, but like I'd probably punch him in the face first. Last note on Brent, Brennan, just like what's the point of a rebellion if you aren't going to change the ideology? Because letting civilians die for your own pride is what they're supposed to be fighting against, and yet here we are. All right, let's talk dragons, Karen Scale, and Darna. Karen is perfect all the time. I was so sad, but like happy when he was also fighting with Scale and like put the shields around them. I was like, Sad because obviously him and Scale, I just want them to be together forever and be happy. But I appreciated his solidarity with Violet and like protective instinct. This book, he did he did a lot of that. He did a lot of like, what is your, what are your wishes? What do you want me to do? And when he almost killed Varys's dragon, I was like, that's my man. That needed to happen. And it was just, oh, he's just perfect all the time. And Darna, she's sassy. She is a sassy little thing and I love her. She is, she's a ride or die. Like, her, like, helping at the end. Oh my gosh. It was amazing. So is she, can she, like, camouflage now? Camouflage or be invisible? And is Violet gonna get that power? Because that'd be sick. Although Zayden, can Zayden still control shadows? Yes, he can. He controlled them in Jack's cage. Okay, with Scale, I might, I might, we might be fighting. Me and Scale might be fighting. At the end, when Zayden was like, I didn't even bother to reach out to Scale because she hasn't talked to me since that night. Oh my gosh, for real? I can't. You can't abandon him. I, I, well, I was going to say I understand. I don't fully understand the dynamics of the Venom and the Riders and the Dragons and how that all works. If it snapped their bond or what. I don't understand all of that, but... I don't know. It's just all heart-wrenching. And did him becoming a Venom kill the other Venom? Like, I have so many questions and so little answers. <sighs> all right, now that I did my big, my big three bad, let's do my big three good really fast. Dane's arc, I liked a lot. There's other, there's other good things. Lord, okay. Come on now. Okay, um, the Liam scene. Loved that. Loved that. That was well written. That was perfectly executed. I loved that. And I'll just put Zayden because, honestly, if Zayden wasn't in it, even though he wasn't in it enough, especially the first half, I might not have finished this book. It's too long. So, final synopsis. Three and a half stars. I'm pretty disappointed. The stars are mostly for, like, how much I care about the characters at this point. And like some like when stuff was actually happening, it was good. But this this was honestly a pain to get through. Like I don't like to have to sit myself down and say you need to finish this book. I like to want to finish the book. So those are all of my final spoiler thoughts after finishing Iron Flame, and I will see you in the next video.